Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about everybody's favorite subject. One of the hardest things to do in a small business, and that is raise prices. So if you've been in business, or even if you're new, we'll talk a lot about a lot of things that may be very interesting coming up on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you want to watch or binge on a bunch of episodes. We have a ton of episodes to catch up on. Go back, watch, listen. It's on YouTube, uh, iTunes, uh, anywhere podcasts are found. And by the way, if you really feel like wanting to do me uh, a huge favor, I've had tons of people who are just texting me like, that was a great show. I really appreciate that, by the way. Uh, but leave a review. Um, why not, right? iTunes, um, anywhere podcasts are, just leave a review because, you know, it is what it is. Um, if it's not your first time here and you're one of the cool kids, you watch every episode, you've listened to every episode, or at least most of them, uh, you do all of that, and more importantly, you buy your supplies from me, shameless plug of the day, uh, well, thank you. It is because of you that I can afford more hair gel for my my hair. Uh, no, but I do really appreciate it. If any of you are putting in your orders through me, letting me put your orders in, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it costs you nothing extra to do that, and that's how I make my cheddar. And all you have to do once you're logged in is just click save this cart and then text me. Be like, yo, my cart is in. And I can see it and put it in, and it's that easy. And I make cheddar on it, and I can buy more hair and gel, and uh, I can keep doing content like this. So thank you guys very, very much. A couple of those people, by the way, is uh, Broughton Window Cleaning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Victor Zelligan. What's up? Uh, just a couple people um, that I pick out of random from people who put orders in from me, through me, and are absolutely amazing. So thank you. Um Another thing, if you didn't know, is the American Window Cleaner magazine. Real quick, if you haven't seen the stickers, if you haven't seen the articles or anything, there is literally a magazine that is made specifically for you, the window cleaner. It is American Window Cleaner magazine. It started in 1986, back in the 1900s. <laughs> and it's still a paper magazine. It comes to your door every single month, and uh, it's awesome. You get stickers, you get a magazine, and you help me. So go and get that if you can. Go to awcmag.com to get a subscription there. Whew. Okay, all my shameless plugs are done. We're on to the episode. I swear I get it under three minutes. Uh, but today we are talking about one of the, I would say, probably hardest things to do, maybe. Um, but it's raising prices. Let me start by saying, a lot of times when we start this business, we think it's all about price. That's when you see always about the new people. Uh, they're always like, here's my special, 20 windows, $99, the cheapest, I'm the cheapest, higher. Understand that we're a luxury business. Understand you're not going to have 100% close rate. Know that the guy who's doing 20 windows for 99 bucks is not gonna be in business very long. Or at least he won't be big because he can't advertise. He's just making enough money to, you know, buy beer or whatever. There's a lot of things that we have to do in business that we need money for. We have to advertise. We have to pay our people right. We have to pay taxes and insurance and workers' comp. We have to buy new equipment and new trucks. We have to insure those trucks and fill them with gas. We have to get clothes and everything else and apparel and signage and SEO work and websites, it's, it's all there. It's all something that has to be done to have a real business. Now, sometimes people forget that we're in a luxury business. People go, well, I don't know, that's $299 seems kind of expensive. Maybe like $199? It seems expensive to you because A, you're not the target market, and B, you, the only thing you know to base it on is price right? I haven't said this in a while. I'm going to put it out there a little bit, but if I am selling you something right now, right? I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you have to 
buy one of these three options. The one for a dollar, the one for ten dollars, or the one for a thousand dollars. What would you pay? Well, before you say anything, the only thing I've told you is price. It's the only thing you know. So it's the only thing you can base your answer on. It's the only information you have. It's either a dollar, ten dollars, I'm sorry, yeah, ten dollars or a thousand dollars. Well, most of you are going to say, well, if I have to buy it, it's a dollar. I have the least amount to lose. Some of you are going to say, well, I'd pay $10 because I don't want to buy the cheapest. right? That's, by the way, the power of threes if you're not doing threes in your uh, packages. Very, 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 very few of you would pay $1,000 without me telling you what it is that you're buying $1,000 for. Now, some of you... Maybe like, well, I know Jersey, he wouldn't steer me wrong, so I'd pay the $1,000 because I know it would be a bargain, right? There's, there's certain other things to it. You know something more than just price. But now if I gave you a little bit more information, I'd say, hey, this is a brand new 2023 Ferrari. What would you buy? What would you pay? Well, now I give you all the information for your brain to understand what it is, to get the feeling of owning a Ferrari for two seconds. Like a Ferrari, oh man, so fast. Oh, dude, they're just so sexy looking. They're great. I gave you all the information you needed to know. And now every one of you, okay, 99% of you, would be willing to buy, pay $1,000. Would be willing to, you know, buy two at $1,000. And what's changed? What's changed is the price is not the only bit of information you knew. Now you know more, right? So that's the difference between value and price. Keep that in mind when we're talking about price. If you think you have to be the cheapest in your area, you're absolutely wrong. You don't. We serve, uh, we sell window cleaning. That's a luxury, window cleaning. I'm not my target market for window cleaning. As I get older, maybe I would be, but no, right? So you're thinking of things like you, who's not your target market. When you're talking to somebody who paid, you know, a million dollars because they got the nicest view in town for a house, they don't care that you're charging them money because they paid for the view, right? If you are doing it for a uh, family who, you know, loves sun and sunshine and they, they want the light, there's just so many reasons that you can have that. People who take pride in their stuff, right? People pay way more than window cleaning prices for lawn care every year. Well, yeah, but it keeps growing back. Yeah, your windows keep getting dirty. But why do they cut their lawn? If they don't have an HOA yelling at them, why not just let it grow? Because they want it to look nice. They want their house, the, the appeal. They want to come home and, wow, oh, this is nice. There's so much more to a service or a purchase than a price. No one buys a drill because they want a drill. They buy a drill because they need a hole or they need a screw screwed in faster than a screwdriver. Nobody needs the drill because it's the drill, right? Okay, off my horse some price. But raising prices is hard. If you don't raise prices, you make less every single year. Now, the cost of inflation, let me explain this. Again, there's a couple of explainers before we get into this, I know. But inflation works like this. And you have to know this as a business owner. You have to. But inflation this last year was 9%. Okay? When I'm recording this. Bad year. Bad presidential year, I guess. A lot of bad things as a small business. But one of the things was the economy. Now, at 9%, to dumb that down, as dumb as I can put it, not that you're dumb, but just the simplest, is that 9%, meaning your dollar is now worth 9% less than it was last year. Now, inflation works like this. A gallon of milk, say it was $2. It's not, but for even numbers. This year, it would be $2.18 for the same gallon of milk. 
That means every price of every service, everything, every pizza, every fuel, car wash, everything has gone up. Cost of the soaps that go into things. The cost of everything, right? You go to the grocery store now, it costs way more. Why? Because inflation. Now, if that gallon of milk costs $2.18 now, when it was $2, but you're still making the same amount of money, your money is going not as far. You're not able to spend or get as much for your money anymore. You're getting actually 9% less. Now, with that being said, a dollar is worth a dollar until inflation makes it worth nine cents less. Now that dollar's worth 91 cents, right? You're getting 91 cents worth of stuff that you were for a dollar last year. That's how inflation works. Now, if you're not raising your prices, I know it's hard, I know it sucks, I know everything else, but that means that if last year you made XYZ and this year you're making the same amount, you're actually making money that's worth less. If you did $100,000 last year and this year, nothing else changed, nothing, right? Now you have less money. You have now $91,000. You made, no, no, I made a hundred. No, you didn't. Because you can't buy the same stuff. That's inflation. Understand that. You have to keep up with inflation. And you're smarter. You have a a year more of experience in business and experience for the company, for cleaning, for everything. Better equipment. You've invested in your company. You've done this. You've done that. So my raise every year that I would put into play is 2% above inflation. That's how I word it. Because some years, inflation's 2%. Some years, it's in 3%. Some years, we get shafted and it's 9%. If we had negative inflation, right? If inflation was actually like negative one, would I lower my price? Yeah, I'm still 2% above inflation. If inflation goes down, which it doesn't, then I would definitely, definitely change that. But the big thing is, is how do we do it? How do we tell somebody, hey, thanks for booking us. We have to raise that price. Most people are good with it. Most people, if you word it right, are good with it. I've had um, some route people that have shopped around and you're always going to lose route people. Um, Maybe not just with the inflation route, but if anybody else comes, fish is always going to be less than you, right? Um, I cannot remember a single time that I've lost either a commercial building that wasn't out for bid or a, um, a, uh, residential customer because of a raise. I just have it. You're going to lose route regardless. The come and go. They're always somebody, Bucket Bob's going to come in there. They're going to do a crap work and they'll come back or whatever. Uh, commercial, they're always going to put something out. Maybe they have to get three bids. If they're always three bids, then what they do is really only shop on price in that particular world. Then it's a necessity, not a need. We're talking residential, right? But residential, people just don't really care about the increase because of the way I word it and the way I put it out there, right? If I told you, hey, this year we got to raise prices, we're going to raise you 2% above inflation, 2% above inflation, 2%. So technically this year, because inflation is such garbage, that's actually 11 total percent. I raised their bill by $11 or 11%, I should say. But it's 2% above inflation, meaning I'm charging 2% more this year because I know more, because my crew knows more. We're better. Our gear is better. Our everything. 2%. That keeps me accelerating myself. Inflation keeps it solid. So I'm really only getting a 2% raise every year in what I do. Now think about any other job you've ever done ever in the history of you, in the history of anything in the past 100 years. People that work somewhere, unless you're in sales, but if you're working anywhere, um, you get a raise every year. You get a raise and a cost of living increase. Or they put it all together. You always get a raise. Why? Because you know more. You're more valuable to the company. Cost of living increase. Other things change. This has changed. 
every job in the entire country gets a raise every year until you like cap out or whatever. Some jobs have that, some jobs don't. By the way, if you cap out, there's no incentive to work another year. You're at the max. Then you're finding something else, right? But you always get that. Why not in a service would you make less? I know guys who have had companies for 10, 15 years, have customers 10, 15 years, and then they complain. These guys are just, they're so low, their prices are so low, but I've had them since the beginning. What? You're still doing it for like $120? Doesn't make any sense. You're doing it for free. You're losing money just because they're OG. You've missed the boat now. It's 15 years later. You can't raise the price 15 years worth of compounded increases, right? So it has to be done every year. If it's done every year, it's done in small pieces. It's done in small pieces. People can understand that everything costs more. People can understand what 2% is, right? They can understand all that. It's not up to you to go, oh man, well, they're not going to, oh, they're not. Well, then if they don't, they don't. But you just did the job. Why are you going to make less now to keep doing it? And now remember, interest, uh, or I should say, um, inflation compounds like interest, right? Does that make sense? Compounding inflation works the same way as compounding increases would work. You have a percentage on a percentage. So that works as in if you've ever seen your mortgage, you always pay way more interest um, first and then principal second. And eventually, as the principal goes down, that compounding interest kind of goes, right? With inflation, it's the same thing. Over 10 years, over 10 years, say you have 5% the first year. The second year, you have 5%. Well, you're technically doing 5% on that and then 5% of 5%, right? So it's not 5% of the dollar amount because instead of 100,000, you made 105,000. Now you're doing 5% on 105,000. Then you're doing 5%, right? So compounding interest kind of works that way. Backing the whole thing up. It could be small chunks that compound to make it make sense. This is why new jobs always come in higher than existing jobs because you're at the new rate, this rate. You tell people this rate, they're like, yeah, cool. If you tell somebody, I've been doing your job for $100, but now I need to charge you $400 because that's what today's prices are. They're like, I can't do that. That's too much. You have to do it in small pieces. Residential understands that concept. I put it on all my paperwork. I uh, let people know that it is a once a year increase of 2% above inflation just to keep up with the market. Um, if they have problems, you know, they can talk to me or whatever. I've never had somebody say anything. Never. I always put it on there just so that they know so that i have it so i can show them so that i can tell them i'll note it on their next invoice when they get it the first of the year everything in the new year goes up that's how i do it percentage is yearly or calendrical not yearly from that it's always increased and then i also can use it as a little bit of a push the end of the year is usually the slowest time. And I'll tell people, hey, if you get it in before the new year, you'll catch it before that 2% increase. 2% is 2%. And they go, oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, you could, yeah. I've used it that way. People don't care about the cost increase because it's happening on everything. They get it at their work. Right? By the way. Now I'm self-conscious of every time I say the word right because of the review somebody left and I posted. But people get increases. You get increases. And doing it in small pieces creates a long-term total or a long-term... It eases the pain. Route is a different story. Route is hard. Route is more of a necessity and less of an experience. In residential, we can always sell the experience. We can always put it out there that we offer this, 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 and this. Look at our staff and this. And, oh, man, when you're done, you're going to feel so great because of this. People go, yeah, 
I want that. In route, they're less likely to do that. People say, do you do increases in route? Yes, I do. Because why would I go through an entire route for an entire year and the next year do the exact same amount of work for less money? Let me ask a different way on route. So a lot of you do route and a lot of you are very, very, very scared on the price. The price is always what it comes down to. But let me ask, would you do a route job if I said, hey, I'll let you clean my windows. But every year, I want 9% off my bill. Every year, I want 9% off. So that means next year, it'll be 9% less. It's like every year you do this, I'm going to pay you less. You'd be like, yeah, I know that that doesn't work. That's what's happening if you don't increase it. Route's tricky because we're talking about different percentages. You start getting into uh, cents and things like that, right? 9%, 2% on top of a $20 bill is not a lot of money. But it's still as necessary as it ever was. Now, they could shop around, but they're not going to for 2%. Even if you have a price difference of a dollar, right? A dollar, maybe. If they're price shopping, they're not happy with the service anyway. And even if you don't change prices at all, and they think you're too high in their brain, or somebody comes in and says they could do it for less, you lose them. That's route. Route is a very finicky, very cold-hearted type version. Route's tricky, but it still has to happen. I know very few companies that are increasing regular on route because it scares them. They don't want to lose it. When it comes to commercial, that's anything that is once, uh, once every quarter, once every six months, or once a year. It's very well noted that annually there's a 2% above inflation increase that keeps us up to market. And I let people know that. I let them know that when they book. I let them know that on every invoice. On every invoice it's noted. And it's just like that. A lot of times if people are doing these long-term budgets or they're doing like a three-year contract or something along those lines, if you do a three-year contract, this is for any of you who do that, you will always put in a yearly increase. I have never heard, I mean, could happen but I've never heard of somebody who has done a three-year contract and has not had a percentage increase every year that doesn't make sense why are you making less it just doesn't make sense in the contract world they already understand it they already understand it if they're running contracts if they're not running contracts they still understand it it's just not in the contract they still may end up putting it out to bid for other people but they may do that for anything if you lose a customer, say it's a $10,000 customer, you do their job and you lose them because of a 2% above inflation, you didn't provide anything but a price. Is it bound to happen? Yes. Is it bound to say that there are just some customers out there who are only based on price? Yes. But you're not doing this for free. You're not in business for them. You're not in business because you somehow make the world a cleaner place. You're not in business because your parole officer says you need to legally start this business and charge next to nothing. Nothing. You're in business to have a business. Yeah, it could be freedom, financial, all that. If you like make less money every year, you're going to have less freedom. If you make less money every year, you're obviously going to have less money. If those are either the two of your choices, which are basically the only two choices anybody goes into business, then you've just ruined both of them by not doing increases. It's hard, though. It's hard because we're so, we're so focused on price a lot of times that it gets tricky. The new guy, if you've been in business for under two years, right? You're going to be more scared to do this because you have 
less jobs. You have less security. The company who's been doing this for 10 years goes, yeah, of course, I got to do that. Why would I not do that? If I lose somebody, I lose somebody. It's easier for them because they understand. It's easier for them to understand pricing is what makes everything go. I'm willing to do this work for this price. And out of that work, I have to pay a bunch of office people. I have to pay for trucks and fuel and uh, equipment and, like I said, websites and all the maintenance and SEO work and ads and everything. I pay all that. So when I go to your property and I clean one window, that one window pays the person who's doing it, but then pays a piece of everything else in your company. Break down what you're actually doing. If you need a shirt, okay, you're sitting in your office and you need pens. Oh man, my my pen just went out. I gotta buy pens. That pen came from that window. A very, very small percentage. It may be a hair of a penny if you do a lot of work. But a hair of that window went to pay for a pen. It went to pay for, you know, a uh, 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 a meal for the the employees. It went to pay for new gloves, binders, all the little things that just come with business. Where does that money come from? It comes from you doing window cleaning. All of that stuff goes up in price. That pen now costs more. The shirts you get now cost more. The fuel now costs more. The trucks, geez, buy a vehicle right now. That costs more. Everything that you pay has gone up. That's not including the things that you're doing and buying and living on yourself. That window has to go up every year because your costs and everything else go up. It's a sucky thing. We're in the very beginning of the year when I'm recording this. We're in February, by the way. Spring is coming soon. So it really is the perfect time to think this. It's scary. I get it. It's scary. But you cannot put it off for another year. If you do, now you have to do double that increase next year. And technically, it would even be more because of compounding interest if you wanted to stay sane. If you've had jobs for 10 years and you've not done an increase, you're behind the bar. You can never get that back to where it needs to be. If you said, well, I know, you know, when I clean, I I make 50 bucks an hour. I'm good with that. Maybe now. But every year that becomes less and less and less and less and less. And it's not about that. It's about what you're doing. Your business does less every year. Why would you go and chase to always get more customers, which means more work, to bring prices down? I had a guy one time tell me this. This is the the most... um, ridiculous thing that I've probably ever heard. I have a couple of them that are bouncing around in my brain, but most ridiculous thing I've ever heard was it's about price. It's hilarious. But he said um, that I don't um, I don't raise my prices. I keep my prices even lower. Uh, we do more window cleaning so I can charge less. First off, you don't know business. Business. If I buy phones, if I buy anything, when I buy more of them, right? if I buy one to sell or I buy 1,000 to sell, it's cheaper for me to buy them at 1,000. The Walmarts of the world work because they sell so many different things. They buy on a big big scale. They buy cans of soda less than any other place can because they buy so much. That's why they can still make the same profit by charging less because the buying power is there. You have only X amount of minutes in your day. Your dollar amount, because you do more windows, you never, ever, ever could charge less money because you do more windows. doesn't make sense. You're not making more money. You're losing money. You're charging for an hour. An hour is an hour, regardless if you make $1,000 or you make a dollar. An hour is what you're selling. You can't get that hour at less. You are not Walmart. You do not sell a bulk rate. Do not ever have that concept because it's absolutely incorrect. 
It's the most ludicrous, ludicrous thing that I've ever heard from somebody. Um, and I just want to share that with you. Anyway, one other thing with price, when you have new customers coming in, bump them at your percentage increase. The new customer will always be at this year's pricing. Always remember that. That's why new customers, you're always a little bit more. They always say, yes. You're like, wow, this customer's great. Always keep up with it. You have to raise in prices. It's one of the most uncomfortable things, of course, in window cleaning or any other business, but it has to happen. It has to happen. So hopefully this show uh, puts something in your brain, at least to understand pricing, understand why you have to do it, and uh, kind of start the awkward conversation. I hope, I hope you didn't hate it so much that you're not going to buy your supplies from me because I make money if I put your orders in. So, by the way, if you have any orders that you need to place, I would love to be a rep. My name is Jersey with windowcleaner.com, the greatest place to buy window cleaning supplies, and my number direct is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. Text me, call me, let's do it. I'd love to put orders in. Just keep me in your phone for when you're ready. Another thing, as I always say, is American Window Cleaner Magazine. The greatest magazine's ever been invented for window cleaning ever in the history of ever. Says me. Right. Go to awcmag.com. Get a subscription. Be absolutely amazing with that. Let me put your orders in. You know, do it all. Because why not? Shoot me a text and just say, hey, I saw the podcast. It sucked or it was great. Put it out there. And if you're still watching this late in the show and you're on YouTube, go ahead and comment the word purple. That way I know you listen to the whole thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you again next week.